Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel, and this is Scott. Can you remember the last time you self-hosted an application in your home lab? And can you remember what that application was? And specifically, can you remember which commands you used in order to host it? So documentation is extremely important if you self-host. I have covered Joplin notes on the channel before in the tutorial self-hosting documentation and Joplin has since become one of my favorite tools. Joplin notes uses a centralized replication server and clients replicate to and from it. And Joplin clients are available for Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, and iOS. So bnote is a term that means to annotate excessively or absurdly according to the Webster Dictionary. We are going to look at an open source application called bnotes that is entirely web-based and does not require a separate client. In the way of review, here we have the GitHub page for Joplin and Joplin clients are available for Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Android, and iOS. And here they have the depiction of what it might look like on a phone, and then here what it might look like on a desktop. And you'll notice right away that Joplin notes can include text, they can include graphics that you can import, screenshots, and so on. And it uses a markdown editor in order to get special text types, bulleting, and so on. And in fact, you can display your editor in dual screen where you have the markdown editor on the left-hand side and the right-hand side the uh, completed effect of using the markdown editor. And so you can take notes from a variety of sources. You can also import notes from Evernote. Um, it uses end-to-end -end encryption and you always sync back with a server. Here we are at the login screen for my BNotes instance. And one of the first things you'll notice is that it's completely web-based and there are no clients. So I'm using Bitwarden here to log into my BNotes instance with my extremely long and complex password. And here's the main screen of B-Notes. First on the left-hand side of the margin, you have a hamburger menu, which simply collapses the menu. If you click on it again, it brings the menu back. The first option is a search option to search for notes by keywords or by tags. The second option is a tags option that you can go in and create new tags. And you can either do this in the tags section or when you create a note. The third section is a recycle bin where it shows you all of the notes that you've created and deleted. And you can see I've been busy playing around with the product to see how it works. The next section is a user section. And since I'm the admin user, it went ahead and allows for me to see the user section and to create other users. The my account section has my account. It simply has my uh, name and email and then it allows me to change my password. The next option is the logout option, which is self-explanatory. When you enter E notes, when you enter B notes, I said E notes, when you enter B notes for the first time, you get this uncategorized section and you can create notes within it. But I've created a collection called B notes. I believe that collections in B notes are very similar to notebooks in Joplin in that you can have multiple notes inside of a collection. And in this case, I have two notes. The first note is one called test note, and the second one is simply a collection of the commands that I use to install B notes. So here you can see that I can click on this and I can scroll down and see the contents of this note. But the other thing that I can do is I can hit this menu right here and I can go into edit and you can see that this is the B notes markup editor. It allows you to add a tag associated with this particular note. The note has a title. The title is test note. Um, you have the ability to do uh, normal headline one, headline two, headline three. So very basic editing that you would expect uh, with the web-based editor. 
We have the bold, the italics, and the underline. We can create a bulleted list, which is what you see right here. You can type regular text, which you can see right there. We can create numbered um, lists, which I have not created, but it works the same way as the bulleted list. And then we have the concept of a task list, which we can check and uncheck items within the task list as they're completed. The next thing we have is a blocked quote, and I typed in quoted text, and the block quote has the little gray bar on the left-hand side to indicate that it's quoted text. And the next section is the code block, and I've defined a code block down here, which uses a little bit different font, and it's a series of commands. The next thing we have is this little icon up here that says unfurling link, and if I type in the name of a link and then I highlight it and click unfurling link, it creates a little icon for it and makes it a hyperlink to go off and look at something. In this particular case, I have created a link for chat.scottabyte.com, which is where all of my viewers should be going to have discussions about the videos and other questions you may have. So when I click on that, it goes into the scottabyte.chat main page. And so that's basically all there is. We have an undo and a redo command up here. And when we're done with this, we can either go back to B notes or we can click save or delete in the upper right hand corner. And we go back to the main menu. So let's go see how to install B notes. In order to install BNotes, I'm going to create a LexD instance of Ubuntu 2204. And the important thing I want you to notice out here is that I've got security.nesting equals to true. And the reason for that is because we want to be able to nest Docker inside of this LexD instance. So the next step is I'm going to do a LexC exec BNotes Bosch to connect to the Bosch shell, and then we're connected as root. So we can do an apt update. We don't have to use the sudo command because we're already running as root. I see that there are 10 packages that can be upgraded, so I do an apt upgrade dash y. Next, install Docker from the Docker script on the Docker website. Now install Docker Compose. Next, add a user account. So add user Scott. Give Scott a password. Add Scott to the sudo group. And also add Scott to the Docker group. Ask you over to the Scott account. And now do a git clone to bring in the components of the BNotes application, which are very simple. Now that we've done that git clone, if we do an ls, we have a bnotes folder here, and we can cd into bnotes. Do an ls-al, and we really only have two files. The files are basically the env.example file and the docker compose file. So the next step that we want to do is we want to copy that compose file, or that env file, rather, over to .env and after we do that we want to do a nano on env and this is what the .env file looks like basically I'm going to go up here I'm going to change the app port from 8000 to 80 since the LexD container is dedicated and will have port 80 available so at this point, you can go down and you can change the uh, database name, which I suggest you don't do because I'm not sure if it's used anywhere else. But you can change the database username and the database password if you like. 
And then they have the settings for your SMTP settings for email as you find in many of these types of applications. So I'm going to do a control O, hit enter, and then control X to exit the editor. I was actually unable to get B notes to run the first time when following the directions on the website. So I discovered that it's important to do a sudo chown, which is change ownership to 1000 colon 1000 on the .env file. Once you've done that, provide my sudo password. I can do a docker compose up dash D and that'll go ahead and pull the product down the database and the app and bring it up and get it running. Now that the Docker compose has completed, we need to go enter the shell for the app part of this application. So the application part is called APP, short for app, and we do a docker compose dash dash user is application, and then we're entering the app called app, and we're going into the shell. So once we get a shell prompt, which is in the slash var slash www folder, we want to execute the command php artisan install. And that completes successfully. And it will ask you a question. It'll say, this will invalidate all existing tokens. Are you sure you want to override the secret key? Now I want to point out that you'll get an error in this command unless you have changed the ownership of that .env file as I mentioned in the previous step. So yes, we want to override the secret key. Do you really want to run this command? Yes, I do. And it does an application migration and creates a database. It says, what do you want your username to be? I'll go ahead and make it Scott. And what's your email? I'm going to go ahead and make it bmsman at gmail.com. And then it asks you what you want your password to be. And I'll type in a password. And it says installation complete. At this point in time, you can type exit to exit out of that Docker container. Next, we do an IP space A to see where we're running. You can see that we have a loopback connector, we have a Docker connector, and we have a whole bunch of other devices, but at the bottom we have an ETH0, and it's running at my local address of 172.16.1.222. And since I changed the port number from 8000 to 80 in my .env file, I'll just be able to enter that address in a web browser. Here we are at the web browser, entering the address of 172.16.1.222, and I get the prompt. So I type in my email address, which is vmsman at gmail.com. I go down to the password field and type in the password that I entered and we log in. By default, you'll see that there's some default notes up here. One of them points you to their website where you can see the GitHub site for B notes. I want you to notice that most of these files have been updated either last month or two months ago, so the product is fairly new. Uh, they also have some test notes that says that you can do things like uh, paste in uh, browser links, which we discovered earlier, and also how to edit text. Assuming that you have a registered domain name that you own, you can go ahead and go into Nginx Proxy Manager or into Cloudflare Zero Trust, as I've covered in two fairly recent videos, and you can go ahead and give yourself a subdomain name, which you have also registered out on your DNS, and in my case, notes.scottabyte.com. I simply say it's using HTTP. It's pointing to a local address. This is a different instance of it I have up and running. 
and port 80, and that's all there is to it. We set up block common exploits and WebSocket support, and we also go in and grant it an SSL certificate. So what do I think of B-Notes? Well, B-Notes is an entirely web-based product, and that makes it very appealing for not having to install a client for everywhere where I want to use it. That being said, Joplin has an awful lot of features and their mobile applications are really compelling because they allow me to view the notes very simply. I'll probably continue to use Joplin notes because of all the features that it has embedded, but B notes is very compelling and I may run it as an additional notes product as well. And BNotes is very new. As you saw from the GitHub website, it only appears to be a couple of months old, and I think that it's going to be acquiring a lot of new features in the future. So this is one to keep your eye on. So in summary, documentation is critical in any self-hosted home lab. I use Joplin Notes extensively with the Joplin Notes server to replicate my notes. BNotes is a viable alternative or perhaps additional application to log your notes as well. BNotes is simpler than Joplin Notes, but it provides for basic lists, bullets, tasks, and code blocks. BNotes is open source and entirely web-based. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time.